I'm really happy that uh, we have so many participants of our webinar. So let me start it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a webinar for our uh, new uh, master program, Master of Computer Vision in uh, HSE University. And today I'm really happy that we can share you our uh, get, uh, experience of our guests and our friends from around you, IT company who has uh, have an experience in computer vision and in many really interesting uh, applications. So um, let me briefly introduce uh, our program and uh, the main participants, I'm sorry, of today's uh, meeting. So uh, my name is Andrei Savchenko and I'm a academic supervisor of this program of Master of Computer Vision. Also today, uh, we are happy to be with our Dean, Natalia Seva, who, may, who make a lot of work on uh, running this uh, Master of Program. And uh, here are our industrial partners uh, from Round U company, Andrei Kolpakov, who is the CTO of this company, and also Alexandra Stalin, who is a computer vision engineer, and also he is a graduate of uh, our university, of our offline program. So uh, speaking about uh, our um, master program, uh, I should say that it will be a completely online program uh, designed for Coursera. So it will be run uh, in Coursera and you can uh, use all uh, services of Coursera uh, together with, for sure, together with services of our uh, HSE University. And uh, we would like to, um, uh, to give you an opportunity to master your knowledge in computer vision, to become a good practitioner in computer vision field. Uh, we also have a partnership with uh, several leading companies who had a great experience in computer vision and uh, uh, these partners will participate in our courses in our, uh, they will give you uh, the tasks for the projects, for courseworks and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, and today we speak uh, with the participants of one of such uh, company. And also I should say that uh, as our program will be completely online, it will be rather comfortable for for everyone because you don't need to uh, move to from one city to another, so you can uh, spend, uh, so you can uh, study at your own home, and you can moreover you can uh, do some other business. Uh, I don't know, work in some industrial company, but for sure you will need some um, hours to some free hours to uh, study hardly at our at our master program. So we have. Uh, so here is a short list of our main partners who will participate in our courses and our projects and uh, so it's Intel Huawei from our most of them are from our uh, city Nizhny Novgorod from Russia but also we have partners from Moscow and so on and so forth so um, and uh, right now I'm really happy that we can meet our industrial part partner around your company uh, they will uh, organize the course on deep learning for computer vision uh, in our master's degree they will uh, sure give you some projects and coursework so uh, let me um, switch uh, the presentation off and uh, give the word to uh, Andrei Kupakov. Andrei you are welcome to share your screen yeah yes Hi everyone. Okay. So do you see my screen? Yeah, everything is perfect. Perfect. You can start. Thanks. Yes. Okay, thank you. So my name is Andre. I'm a CTO of the Around You company. And today I'm going to tell you about our two startups. Those two projects are in sport analytic area. One is about basketball and another about golf. And I will tell you how computer vision technologies um, helping us to reach our goals and to solve our issues and which challenges we faced during this time 
and how we solve those issues and those challenges. So uh, let's start from the golf project. So uh, several years ago, we had one idea. What if we uh, installed several cameras around the golf course and we will be monitoring every, everything what is going on on this field. And based on this uh, data, we can recognize, for example, people on the field, we can recognize their movement, we can recognize when they're preparing to the strike, when they are doing their swings, their puts, putts, and so on. And we can provide, based on this data, different analytics um, to players and to their coaches, and for example, for, for the golf, golf clubs. For example, for users, we can provide such information like uh, automatic scoring of this game of their game because now it is totally manually. They write down on a piece of paper their scores, and uh, the idea was to create automatic system uh, where players can see their videos, their statistics, their scores. Everything is online. Everything is their perfect pocket. And clubs could see, for example, heat map of their courses. Uh, they can adjust uh, their course to, to some specific competitions and to have promotion videos, to have live stream videos from the course and so on. So what we can do with computer vision with this installation. So we installed uh, those ca cameras around the golf course. You can see one camera here. And we collected uh, video streams to our processing server. So which computer vision technologies we used and with which challenges we faced during this time. Uh, so one of the um, computer vision um, technologies we used was object detection and multi-tracking. So to detect all people on the course, we used object detection and human detector uh, detectors and to track uh, all golfers on the course, we used multi-tracking uh, algorithms. So, but we faced with different issues during this, uh, um, during this, so as you see, there are different objects on the uh, course, for example, carriages or umbrellas. And from some point of use, they just like an obstacle and we cannot see real players. And we need to um, solve these issues to look from other cameras to, um, for example, manage those cameras and so on. Also, we had limited resources. We couldn't process it offline because we need to reaction for our cameras because we used PTZ cameras. So we were going to manage those cameras to zoom it in, zoom it out and so on. So that's why we need to have online data. So, uh, but we had limited resources. We cannot send, for example, all these video streams to the cloud. We, we have to process it right here, right now in the golf club and get online feedback. Uh, also, uh, this is very challenging part to have uh, this uh, video system on the golf course because areas very, very large. Can you imagine this golf course? It is like 10 or 20 times bigger than uh, football, uh, football course. Uh, and distances uh, from one from camera to the person is about 200 meters, from 100 to 200 meters, something like this. Uh, also, uh, you cannot cover all the field with one camera, and people are moving around. They are moving from one camera to another camera, and you need to adjust your multi-tracking algorithms to pass one person. Uh, from one camera to another camera. Uh, so, and uh, to accomplish our goals, we used PTZ camera. Uh, 
cameras. So those cameras, they can rotate uh, 360 degrees and they can zoom in, zoom out up to 40 times zoom in. So you can um, clearly see uh, the player in zoom in mode. But unfortunately, um, you cannot uh, do it so easily. So you need to manage all those camera. You need to create some kind of mesh of these cameras. And somehow you need to identify where is person located and uh, all their movements. In this also uh, um, computer vision algorithms uh, help us uh, a lot. So based on the uh, tracking data uh, I explained uh, above, so we uh, manage those cameras to track uh, players around the course. So we uh, set up those cameras to moving uh, and uh, spying on the on the people on the course. And if person, for example, is preparing to the strike, we zoom into this person and catch the video of strike in very high quality and save it to our cloud server. So as an output, we have a database with all videos of, of all strikes, even from several views, not only from one camera, but also from several views, one strike from several views. So here we um, have as well limited resources because we need online reaction on this PTZ camera uh, to move it online because if you process it offline, we cannot react it uh, on the movement of the person in online. So that's why we adjusted our algorithms. It is as well a big work because for example, as a prototype, you can take some models uh, actually from GitHub or some other sources and you can easily implement some uh, stock models. But in real cases, you you'll have a lot of challenges during this implementation. And some algorithms, they are working too slow. Some algorithms that work not with a good quality. For example, they recognize different carriages as people and they cannot distinguish uh, different objects and so on. And you need to spend a lot of time to adjust those models to real circumstances, to real environment. Uh, and as we have open area, uh, a lot of clouds in the sky and sun is not constant, lightning is not constant, it is changing continuously. And for example, this moment of time we have uh, light picture in the next uh, moment, you will have very dark picture and you need to handle all those issues. Uh, also, one of the feature of our system was pose detection and um, uh, action detection. So we could detect uh, when people are walking, when they are staying, when they are preparing to the strike uh, and different kind of strike. For example, swing part and other strikes. Uh, so um, during uh, this action recognition, we faced with some issues like we don't know exactly uh, where play players located, and they could be captured from different angles, and we cannot say that this post could be seen from this angle. This post could be seen from the back and you cannot actually say that this player is preparing to the swing. You can mess it up with, for example, a player just staying. Also from different angles, you can see different obstacles. For example, golf players, they use golf cars and one golf car can close, for example, some point of view and we consider it as an obstacle and you can you need to use another camera to catch this player and so on. Also, some people use 
use different poses for different actions. Some people are walking uh, without any carriage, some people are walking with carriage, some people are walking, walking with different things in their uh, hands and so on. So, uh, but we managed to uh, fix all those issues and we created an uh, algorithm uh, based on the deep learning, based on the skeleton detector, uh, which can recognize uh, golfers' positions and so on. So another interesting thing uh, we did in this project is face recognition, uh, because somehow you need to identify the player. Uh, so, uh, but it is not so easy in this environment uh, because uh, generally most common installation of face recognition camera is some corridor or some uh, closed area where you can install uh, a camera under angle, for example, 30 degrees or something like that, or install several cameras they, that capture uh faces very well with good quality but in this case uh, we had very complicated environment to recognize faces uh, because distances uh, were long as i said up to 200 meters and you need to zoom in and when you zoom in uh, you see uh, a lot of aberrations uh, and so on on the image and quality of the image is uh, not so well. Also, golf players, uh, they are playing in sunny weather usually, and they have glasses, they have caps, um, and they have uh, different things that could cover their faces. It is also a challenge to recognize uh, the face. But, uh, uh, it took some some time actually to adjust a uh, face recognition algorithm to catch this, those faces because as i said you can find uh, uh, already trained models for face recognition and they work so well for pictures from the instagram when you see a very uh, big picture with very big face very high quality image but those algorithms uh, don't don't work so well in this environment. And you need to adjust uh, and uh, adjust uh, existing algorithms and create new one, ones to reach your goal. Uh, also, people, uh, they are not looking to the camera. They are just playing the golf. They don't know that we are mm, trying to identify them. So they're just playing golf and they don't care. So it is uh, as well a challenge to catch their faces in the right time. So that's why we need uh, very fast algorithms for face detection and to, for face recognition to um, don't skip frames uh, in the video uh, stream. Uh, so, um, then we have a very interesting project. It is still is ongoing project. It is still uh, under research and development phase. It is a virtual trainer, we call it. Uh, so we, we learned how to um, detect 2D skeleton, but here we uh, put uh, the goal to get 3D skeleton out of one uh, video stream. So as an input, we have a video of the golfer from one you know, mobile camera. As, and as output, we have the 3D model of this golfer. And on this 3D model, we are going to show um, different mistakes uh, of the swing. Actually, uh, to perform the swing, you need to have very good technique uh, to perform very good swing. So you need to have um, some specific pose 
you need to move your hands uh, in one surface with, with different angle, with, with uh, one angle, and so on. Uh, so on this. Uh, 3D model, we are trying to show different mistakes of the player and suggest them how they can act in the next time so uh, they can improve their performance uh, and they can rotate this uh, 3D model, they can look under different angles because when you are training alone, you don't see yourself. Uh, but even when you have your mobile phone and you are capturing yourself, it is not so obvious in some points of view to uh, identify mistakes. But we provide 3D picture of the player, how he, how he performs his swing, and the player can uh, rotate this picture and to see it from different angles. Uh, so, <clears throat> Uh, the challenges here are that uh, swing is very fast movement. Uh, to perform a swing, uh, it takes, for example, 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds, and it is very hard to identify phases of this swing. That's why you need to have uh, very fast cameras with very high FPS, and we need to have as well, very fast algorithm for, for computer vision to um, identify different phases of this swing and uh, to identify uh, mistakes of this player. Uh, also, we are going to use uh, mobile phone cameras. They have, now they have better quality, of course. For example, top models of iPhone, they can capture the video in 4K, but quite older um, Android versions, we can have uh, video streaming in, in not so good quality. Also here in this task, we had a lot of issues with uh, data set. For most computer vision tasks, key is, is to have a good data set. And for this uh, model as well, uh, but it is very complicated to annotate. Usually people um, to create uh, efficient algorithms for computer vision, they create a data set uh, to train this model. And uh, for example, to train uh, 2D skeleton, you need just mark 17 points on the uh, 2D picture. But to create data set for 3D skeleton, you need to create uh, the same points, but in, in 3D, which is not so obvious. And uh, it is very tricky to annotate uh, many videos. So we decided uh, to create a synthetic data set for, uh, for these um, algorithms. So we rented uh, special devices, mock-up devices. So we attached it to the body and we performed uh, swings uh, with different people uh, and different uh, swings with different mistakes. And based on this data, we generated uh, 3D, uh, 3D animations in Unity. So it looks very realistic, so you can reach uh, very high quality in animation these days. So it, it looks like real videos, mm, and we use this, those videos to train the model. And uh, it is still in the process, but seems that uh, this approach is working. Um, so, uh, uh, the, ne the next project is about basketball. So here we have another idea. So we have coaches, we have players, and coaches that tra they train uh, they train players. Um, usually, players are about uh, eight, from eight to twenty years, 
and um, the idea was to provide remote uh, coaching process to the to the uh, coaches and players uh, so they could uh, coaches could provide uh, programs and workouts for their players and players can execute uh, these workouts these programs remotely and our system could analyze uh, their training process and provide feedback for both sides for coaches and for players so and again everything is based on computer vision so here we use uh, a smartphone with built-in camera and um, player he executes uh, workout in front of this camera and we capture the video stream and we recognize everything what's going on in this video and provide statistics to coach and player so First of all, we recognize different objects and again, 2D skeleton on the video. So we, can, we recognize balls, hoops, and maybe cones. Uh, so different objects uh, with which player can communicate and interact somehow. And we recognize uh, 2D skeleton of this player. Uh, here are some challenges. Um, ball in some exercises in some dribbling exercises it moves so fast that on even high quality devices high quality cameras it is very very blurry and even by eyes you cannot recognize this ball it becomes so blurry that it is like uh, not like a ball uh, also uh, we are going to use this application in different environments inside and outside and lightning um, could be different inside uh, the sport hall and outside in the street again clouds and so on uh, also uh, some players they have um, camera uh, phones with low resolution cameras and with low FPS and we cannot capture uh, very high quality images to recognize uh, the objects and the skeleton. Also, one of the challenges is a mobile device. Uh, so initially uh, we had um, recognition in our cloud server. So everything we capture on the mobile phone, we transfer to the cloud server and execute our algorithms there. And uh, when we get the result, we uh, transfer it to the mobile phone. But uh, the next step to create these algorithms for, uh, for the phones, uh, because we need to have instant feedback for the player and during the capture session, we need to um, give him feedback uh, like voice feedback or visual feedback, what he's doing wrong, how to improve his technique and so on. So in this case, we need to uh, port uh, computer vision uh, algorithms from the server side to mobile phones. It is very challenging uh, task uh, sometimes and for again for stock models for very simple models it works but for custom models mm, it doesn't work so well and you need to mm, uh, to spend a lot of time to transfer those models to mobile phone yeah uh, then um, based on the skeleton and ball Mm, we build workouts. So for example, this guy is dribbling uh, around his body at his ball and we identify different metrics. For example, total of uh, his bounces, uh, and speed of his bounces, uh, distance between his legs, uh, different angles between uh, joints of his body. Uh, and height uh, of the bounces and so on. So here we have 
different challenges. For example, how to calculate distances where you don't have uh, exactly set up of the camera, uh, because you can say to the player, uh, please stay in front of the camera, but you don't know exactly height of this camera, um, angle, how he, he installed this camera, and maybe it is a little bit turned uh, and so on. Again, we have very fast moving object in some cases. Uh, uh, and for example, uh, yes. Uh, so, and, and here example of the result of this algorithm is visualization where you can see uh, the result of these algorithms. So here is a player, he's performing dribbling between his legs and we identify um, height of the ball bounces, uh, angles in his knees, distance between his legs uh, and frequency of his repetitions and how many bounces he uh, performed. So, uh, yeah, this is how uh, how does it work? Um, uh, so another uh, another challenging task is how to visualize uh, uh, all metrics vision, because okay, we measured all metrics with uh, with uh, very advanced algorithms, but how to Visualize those metrics uh, because um, on some videos you you collect so many metrics. So if you replace a lot of labels around, it will be too messy. Uh, also, we need to provide um, uh, very informative feedback to the player. And for example, we are using different colors when person is doing wrong, we mark it red. When he is doing, doing good, we mark it green. Uh, also, we visualize uh, the skeleton and ball on this video and some counters um, on this video uh, stream. Uh, for now, we inject those visualizations inside the video stream uh, to show the user but uh, in future, again, we need to uh, create some uh, platform to uh, to mark those visualization um, as overlay uh, for the video stream. And you can, for example, turn it on, turn it off. Uh, for example, do not show skeleton or do not show good executions and so on. Um, also, there are some challenges like uh, put these labels of distances um, uh, along the floor uh, because camera could be installed in different angles and you need to adjust uh, those markers um, to the current environments, to the current installation. Uh, Okay, and yes, mobile devices. Uh, for now, uh, we have all uh, recognition and all computer vision uh, algorithm, algorithms running on the uh, servers with GPU cards. Uh, we have uh, several service, servers with, diff with different GPU cards, and we are performing all alg algorithms on these cards. But uh, in future, it is under development. Uh, we are going to port all our algorithms to mobile devices. And again, challenges, yes, of course, limited resources. Um, it is real-time processing because we need to have instance feedback for the player. And we cannot, for example, process one frame for one second. We need to process one frame like in uh, 50 milliseconds or something like that. 
<clears throat> also, we need to support different different platforms, iOS and Android. Um, now, for example, iOS providing special ML kit uh, for uh, the developers to uh, create um, very advanced computer vision algorithms. But again, you need to uh, create some universal platform uh, for both uh, iOS and Android devices. Uh, also, uh, older devices, they don't support modern techniques and you need to have a balance for, for new devices. You need to adjust it for new algorithms and new uh, SDKs and for older devices, you need to uh, adjust uh, to older versions of uh, Apple uh, of uh, SDKs. So this is our current challenges um, to create mobile version of this app. Uh, and uh, transfer all algorithms to the mobile device. Uh, so um, uh, that's all uh, I wanted to say about those two projects. So as you see, um, computer vision could help uh, us uh, create amazing applications. For example, 10 years ago, you couldn't imagine that this kind of apps exists, but now uh, you can create um, those apps with, um, with computer vision algorithms. And of course, on the way, you will have a lot of ch challenges because, uh, um, because, uh, because the internet, you will find a lot of tutorials, a, a lot of uh, stock models, a lot of GitHub uh, sources, and you can download it and use it and create very simple models. But uh, when you go to the real circumstances, you will face this a lot of challenges you need to solve and you need to adjust uh, those algorithms and uh, create maybe new ones and uh, but our life is boring without challenges. Uh, that's why it is, uh, I would say, uh, good rather than bad <laughs> to have challenges. Um, so, okay, uh, this is all from my part, uh, Alexander. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, and uh, of course we are ready to share such challenges with you because we have, uh, sorry, let me turn on my camera. Uh, because uh, this course also has uh, some uh, projects. Uh, it means that uh, instead of lectures, you will uh, for few weeks uh do some uh applied tasks to solve some like real life problems and uh if we will donate to these uh projects uh we will uh we can share all all, all the tasks that we described so far yeah, and let me briefly describe uh, what uh, what is in our course. Uh, our our course is called Deep Learning for Computer Vision or Deep Learning in Computer Vision. Uh, so, and it lasts for six weeks. The first five weeks uh, consists of lectures and homeworks. And uh, the last week is fully practical because uh, it consists with some, some applied projects. So, yeah. Uh, so, Andre, can you switch the slide? Yeah. Uh, the course starts uh, with the first principles. So we will briefly overview the evolution of computer vision and how does it happen that now it is almost fully deep learning based. 
uh, we will learn or recap some basics, ba basic build, building blocks of uh, deep learning for computer vision. And then we immediately move to the main chapters of the modern computer vision. And once everything started from the image recognition, and this is exactly the first chapter in our course. So here we go through the basic milestones in neural networks architecture design, like from AlexNet to transformers and neural architecture search, uh, meet with transfer learning, representation learning. And after this week, you will learn how to choose the right neural network for your task. And uh, this is the basic knowledge for the next weeks of the course. Yeah, and this is like really important week. Uh, so the next chapter is object detection and object tracking. So this is also an extremely popular topic. Uh, I would say this is the heart of the any video surveillance solution, like for example, our solutions. Uh, we will cover evolution of approaches for object detections, such as uh, Masker CNN, SSD, FP and YOLO, anchor free approaches, etc., along with the popular algorithms for object tracking, because object detection uh, is always near the, uh, goes together with object tracking. It is useless without it. And after this week, you will learn how to choose the right object detection. Uh, and checking approaches for your task and how uh, to evaluate its performance. So the next chapter is deep person re-identification. So it's really a super hot topic nowadays, you know. Uh, you will learn how to, how computers uh, can recognize us people uh, from each other by face or by clothes. Uh, we will review some common approaches for such tasks and its evolution, of course. And the last chapter is image segmentation. It's a rapidly growing area in field of computer vision. So after this week, you will learn how to choose the right approach for your image segmentation task, uh, not matter whether you need to segment street or some in-home environment or brain tumors and etc. So uh, summarizing by the end of the course, you will be able to build your own like video surveillance prototype uh, with all the techniques that with all these techniques under the hood. I mean, image segmentation, uh, image recognition, object detection, object tracking and personal identification. Yeah, probably that's all. That's all for all from our side. Uh, maybe we can answer some questions. Agree? Yeah, thank you so much for the detailed presentation with, <laughs> I believe, some uh, how, uh, know hows, <laughs> especially from Andre. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so when I take a look at it, I'm really wondering that if it's possible to, <laughs> to speak about some of the uh, details in such a kind of public talk. So uh, we have uh, many uh, questions and I believe we answered most of them uh, in chat, but uh, probably you can um, think and you can share your, I don't know, your, your understanding of uh, what we expect to be in near future, because Andre told us that 10 years ago, we can't imagine uh that uh something like uh he told us about uh will ever exist and um, i can prove it because i have experience in computer vision of about 15 years and i remember the situation 10 years ago when yeah when we solve much more uh i don't know useless tasks i believe and uh, our accuracy and uh, our the quality of our solution wasn't so good so what do you think will be in uh, future, I mean, in several, for example, five years, because we speak about master of uh, science and computer vision. So uh, the students will uh, study for two years. And so what do you think they will uh, face after graduating it? 
Yeah, good question. Uh, Andre, do you want to answer or I will answer? You can uh, share your, uh, uh, your thoughts uh, both. Uh, I believe you have some different understanding. Of yeah, uh, I think that many professions will be useless in future. For example, uh, accountant, maybe some legal jobs because computer vision uh, not not like computer vision, but in general speaking, deep learning and machine learning will replace those jobs. And I think that uh, a lot of things will be done with computer vision and with uh, those algorithms. And I think that you you worse of your time if you learn, for example, accounting and for example, um like uh, laws it will be replaced in future by machine learning algorithms better to learn machine learning algorithms uh, than such professions yeah i totally agree <laughs> So, okay, uh, probably we can uh, switch to the uh, last part of our uh, webinar, but uh, I ask uh, Alexandra and Andre to be uh, with us right now and to answer some questions in chat and probably answer some questions after uh, our Dean Natalia will present the, uh, some interesting topics for our new webinars, for example, and so on. So, Natalia, our Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. And I would like to give you some, um, probably summary on uh, your most often questions about our program. Uh, first of all, uh, we can discuss who is this degree for, because there were some um, questions about uh, should uh, I have a bachelor degree or if I am a student of a bachelor program, can I apply for this master program? Uh, because of this uh, master degree program, all of our students should have a bachelor or master degree diploma. So, um, uh, those students who doesn't have uh, in this moment or doesn't receive uh, your diploma by the end of entrance uh, time, uh, you can apply to our program in next cohort when you will be ready with your bachelor diploma. Uh, those students who has already bachelor or master degree diploma, we are inviting to apply to our program. Um, also, there are a lot of questions about um, present skills. What kind of skills should uh, should I have to enter this program to be able to um, uh, study on this program? Of course, we would like to see uh, students. Uh, we don't have special request, uh, requirements about your bachelor diploma or master diploma. It can be uh, any type of uh, any uh, field uh, of uh, your studies, but we uh, strongly recommend uh, our entrance, our students to have some uh, mathematical, technical or IT background. And of course, you will need English language because our program is fully uh, will be um, uh, in English. Uh, and uh, to understand your um, uh, ability to study in our program, uh, the um, uh, ability to fulfill the mathematics and uh, programming, we will have an entrance test uh, in which you will find questions in mathematics and computer science. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, those topics of this uh, exam on your screen, uh, which contains uh, some basic uh, knowledges from high mathematics and uh, programming and algorithms and data structure. 
Uh, also, very uh, often question is uh, what I will receive after finishing this degree. Uh, and the answer is, uh, first of all, you will receive uh, the state approved diploma. Uh, that is, it is uh, really necessary for you to um, uh, um, uh, to make your uh, career in uh, IT. Uh, this is very helpful for this, uh, but uh, this is not only the reason to uh, enter our program, uh, because you, uh, beside this diploma, you will have a lot of uh, knowledges about modern algorithm techniques, uh, uh, model tools of computer vision. Also, during this program, Program, you will uh, solve a lot of problems and you fulfill your portfolio, professional portfolio in computer vision. And of course, very important part of this program, uh, you will uh, meet a lot of uh, professionals, you will meet a lot of interesting people in the field of computer vision. You already uh, meet our colleagues from around your company, you already meet our academic supervisor, and Andrei Savchenko, and you will meet a lot of other interesting people who can explain you a lot of modern and important things about computer vision. So this is very important uh, things that you will receive from this program. And also, I would like to say about some special features of this program. This is a two-year program, as uh, all other master degree programs. Uh, it is um, uh, quite a lot of study you will need to do to uh, fulfill this program. Uh, we uh, calculate that uh, this study will be approximately, will take you from uh, 20 to 30 hours per week, but it really depends on your background. If you are very good in mathematics and uh, computer science, you are really well prepared, you already tried some uh, projects, probably in uh, machine learning. It's, of course, it will be for you not uh, so hard and probably you will need uh, less hours per week to study. But if you don't have a strong mathematical and IT background, it can take uh, you more than 30 hours per week. So you should uh, think about your background and uh, to think about how much time do you need to, to fulfill your study. Uh, of course, we understand this. Uh, this is fully online online program, and we will give all of our students really high level of support. Uh, during all of uh, your courses, you will have synchronous live sessions, webinar like this, when you can meet with your uh, professor, with your instructor, with uh, uh, all people who are taking uh, in part in this course to ask your questions, to ask, uh, to discuss uh, what problems you are meeting in during the study of this uh, course. Uh, it will be uh, approximately um, one time in two weeks, but uh, not to wait for this live session. You will have all the time fast communication with your uh, professor, with uh, other uh, students of the course via uh, charts and forums. Uh, so if you have a question, you can immediately ask it and receive some question, some answer. And of course, you will uh, meet one-to-one uh, -one, uh, with your professor during special office hours, uh, which all of our professors has. Uh, also, um, our some special feature is uh, the great attention to practical work. Uh, we understand that uh, this field of computer vision, it needs a lot of practice. And uh, we um, uh, we will give you uh, mini projects, mini educational projects in all of our courses. So during each course, we will have some task to try your skills on and to receive uh, some uh, project on uh, uh, on uh, your. Uh, uh, 
possible uh, background. And uh, of course, you will have a special, special project courses which are devoted to solve some uh, professional tasks. And uh, these tasks could be uh, from, uh, you, from the real uh, tasks of the company. Uh, you already um, uh, hear today about task of around your company and uh, your, uh, pro your projects could be uh, really related to those tasks. Uh, there were a lot of questions about tuition uh, for our program and the tuition fee you can find on uh, our screen. Uh, of course, we have uh, discounts available. You can find uh, all information about tuition and discounts uh, on our website. Uh, here you can see the link to the page where you can find all the information. Uh, the payment for our course will uh, be made by uh, semester so it's two times a year uh, and uh, all the international applicants uh, can pay uh, the tuition fee in uh, dollars. How can you apply to this program? Uh, for Russian uh, citizen, their registration page will be available soon, uh, but uh, it will be available before entrance exams. Uh, the session of entrance exams uh, is uh, uh, from June to August. Uh, for the foreign citizens, the application is already available. You can uh, do it, you can uh, create uh, your your, uh, put your documents uh, uh, by following the link on our web page or you can uh, photo the QR code and follow the link via QR code. Uh, also, the, uh, all our foreign students uh, will pass also entrance exam and it will be as well as for Russian students from June uh, to August, you will find all the information on our um, uh, on your screen now and in our website. Uh, what uh, will be uh, at the entrance exam? Of course, they need uh, some time to prepare for the entrance exam, and we already uh, make uh, the first webinar uh, on which we described the program of the entrance exams and show one of the example of uh, tasks uh, what uh, you can find uh, on your exam and show how to solve those tasks and you can find if you miss this web, uh, webinar you can find uh, the webinar recording on our web uh, uh, of our web page and uh, you see on the, your screen the link to this page and the QR code to uh, see the recording of the webinar. And also on our website, you can find uh, all necessary information for you to prepare to the entrance exam. Uh, this is questions uh, you, which you should study. This is some um, example of for literature of books uh, which will help you to uh, study all of those questions and also uh, from time to time we will uh, uh, add uh, to this uh, page uh, some other information that will help you to prepare well and pass this uh, entrance exam so i hope uh, for those of you who would like to study at our program it uh, won't be uh, very difficult to pass it. I think you will be able to do this uh, and uh, you will be our student. And of course, uh, we would like to invite you for our following events uh, and our next webinar will be April uh, 22, uh, the same time. Our uh, uh, regular time for our webinars and we would like to um, meet you with our graduates of course there there are 
for this program, online program, we don't have graduates, but we have a quite a similar program on campus, and our graduates are already um, uh, have uh, very interesting jobs and projects uh, in uh, computer vision, uh, and uh, we would like you to meet our those graduates. They will uh, told you about the experience of study, and they will told you about uh, their projects and future plans for professional life. Uh, so this is all for today, and I am really thank you for participation of our webinar, for your questions and for your activity. But if uh, you will have questions after this webinar will finish, uh, don't hesitate to ask it to our colleagues. Uh, now on screen you can see uh, the emails uh, of our colleagues who can. Uh, 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 help you to answer to all of your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have some questions uh, for me and for my colleagues right now, uh, you can ask it now in the chat. Or I don't know if you have uh, the ability to ask you uh, by voice, you also can do it. Yeah, if you raise your hand. You can ask by voice. Ah, okay. So if you have questions and would like to ask you by voice, uh, you could raise your hand and we will give you this opportunity. Yeah, we've got one raised hand. Mm -hmm. Hey. Uh, hi, hi. I have a question. Did I, um... They need to uh, to have a degree on or anything to to participate in this program. Uh, if I understand right, correct, uh, you asking do do you sh should you have a degree uh, before entering this program? Yes, uh, you should have a bachelor degree, or uh, probably if you have master degree, uh, you also can mm -hmm. enter our program. Yes, and thanks for the question for we... them. Sorry? <clears throat> thanks for the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We've got another one. Mm, Natalia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Natalia Sakharova. Nope. You can ask your question in Russian. Uh, we will translate it in English uh, to other participants if it uh, will be more comfortable for you. Mm, I guess not. Another question. Metapasri, you're online. Meta. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, we hear you nice. You're online. Hello. Hello, we hear you well. Uh, okay, I, I would like to ask about the program. I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if my sounds are clear or not. Okay, so is the program executive or academic program? I used to attend two webinars with with this you know program, and I got two uh, two answers. I'm not I'm not sure that it's not clear to me. Is it executive programs, professional programs, or academic programs? Which means I can do research papers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Andre, can you answer? Or I can answer. 
Oh, you can answer because I believe you <laughs> already answered okay. it. Okay, this uh, is uh, of course academical program. Uh, you can uh, make your papers, research papers. You can go uh, to the PhD programs after finishing them. But uh, during this program, you also will have a lot of practical tasks which will help you to uh, become a real specialists uh, for the applied uh, tasks, and you can to go not only for research career but also for uh, applied career in IT companies. Meta, any questions? Mm. I guess not. Uh, well, go to another one. Uh, Ahmed Kayot, you're online. Ahmed, you can answer a question. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you well. Oh, perfect, thank you. So thanks for the presentation, it's um, very clear. Um, I have a question though. So I'm a grad student of Johns Hopkins and I'm doing um, a master's in genomics. Um, but I'm interested in the field of computer vision. So my question is, are there like concentrations that specifically focus on healthcare or genomics um, as it regards um, computer vision? I'm, I'm just wanna be clear if there's an application for healthcare in computer vision in the course. Yeah, maybe I can answer about our Thank course. Thank you, all right. Yeah, uh, we are planning to include some uh, medical related tasks in or medical related examples in in the chapter of image segmentation but we are not concentrating around the medicine only okay well, okay sounds good as long as there is a concentration that is um applicable for healthcare medicine that's fine yeah methods are very... applicable absolutely yeah oh, absolutely thank you very much um, thank you We've got another question from Yoram Naveen. You're online and you can ask your question. Okay, hi, okay. Uh, uh, it is a uh, university, HSC university, is it a virtual university or a physical university? Oh. We can get you. Uh, okay. So, if you pay, repeat, please. I think you all are uh, belongs to the HSC University, right? You are the faculty members of HSC University. Is this oh. university virtual or physical? Well, I guess we can get you still. Could you uh, ask a question? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it. <laughs> I hope I understand it correctly, but uh, if not, please uh, check me. So uh, we are located in uh, physically uh, HSC has uh, four campuses. Uh, so in four cities of Russia, the main campus in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, in uh, Perm, and in Nizhny Novgorod. We are located in Nizhny Novgorod. So uh, all of us are located in Nizhny Novgorod uh, together with uh, uh, the main, uh, our industrial partners and so on and so forth. So uh, I hope I understood your question correctly about our physical location. Yeah, correct, I guess. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. And next one, Jose Lemos, I guess. You're online and you can ask your question. Uh, Jose, you're online. Yes, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, yeah we hear you well. Hi, everyone. Well, you know, um, I love cybersecurity, so I would like to ask you if you have any degrees or degree for cybersecurity or any advice. Thank you. I guess uh, in our program, we don't have cybersecurity course. 
probably you can look for some other programs. Uh, as far as I know, uh, among our um, online programs, uh, we don't have cybersecurity program. Perfect, I appreciate that. Very probably you, you. if you are really interested, uh, there are some programs in, in campus. Perfect, I will check it. I will check it and I appreciate your time, okay? Okay. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, next one. Abayomi Fagboy. I guess I do correctly. You're online and you can answer a question. Okay. Um, thank you. You got it right. Um, I have two questions. Okay. The first one is um, I have a friend who did um, a master's degree online with a university. I won't like to mention the name right now. So after that, they promised that um, the, the, the degree is well known and um, is well recognized um, worldwide. But however, um, he couldn't use the certificate because it wasn't recognized. So I want to ask, so after the completion of this program, uh, I hope it will be well recognized um, worldwide, um, not locally to, to Russia, even in, in my country, I hope it will be well recognized. That's number one. Then number two, um, I have a BTEC in mathematics and I have a master's degree in um, information technology. So I hope um, it will be a smooth ride if I'm to opt for deep learning um, for this particular um, online degree. So those are my two questions. Thank you. I can answer the first question uh, with your diploma. You will receive uh, some, uh, this is called uh, European application in English language, which is recognized in uh, many countries and a lot of universities and companies. Uh, this is for the first part of the question. Colleagues, can you answer the second part? Could you repeat the second question for us? Okay, so the second question is, um, I hope it will be a very smooth ride for the deep learning. Though I have background knowledge of uh, mathematics and um, um, IT, information technology. So I'll be opting for deep learning. So I want to ask, I hope it will be a smooth ride. Oh, yeah, we have some adaptation courses for you to understand um, uh, some uh, more deep uh, techniques from deep learning and uh, deep neural networks and so on. So we have adaptation course in mathematical, uh, mathematics for computer vision. We also have courses on uh, image processing, which um, you can don't need much uh, mathematical information, but it will be really helpful for understanding about uh, some uh, key concepts of deep learning, like, for example, convolution or linear filter and or things like this. So uh, we hope that many topics uh, will be uh, will be available for uh, even for someone who are not familiar with deep learning for sure and with uh, neural networks with machine learning and with some about this. But we also have some uh, entrance exam to be sure that you have some some fundamental knowledge of mathematics and uh, computer science uh, and you can take a look at our site website that i have uh, probably answered several questions with uh, in our chat uh, when i mentioned the site for our entrance exam and something like that. okay i guess that's all for now we have another question in the chat. Thank you guys for visiting our webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And we will see you at our new webinars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And thanks again. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.